Hi everybody, in today's episode of Ask David, we're going sushi style and talking about raw photos. Hey David, I was reading something online about raw photos versus out of camera JPEGs. I don't really know the difference. What's the difference between raw and JPEGs? Good question. So this is a digital camera, typically DSLR specific question. A lot of the cell phones and point and shoots don't allow you to take the raw photo that the, the camera is taking. Raw photo is just the data straight off of your digital camera sensor. And so what happens is when your digital camera takes a photo, the, the, the data slides off of the sensor into the memory and if you save your raw files, it's stored as something like a DNG, uh, PEF for Pentax, and N something for Nikon, I forget what the one for Canon is. But DNG is a universal raw format that is recognizable later in post. We'll get to that in a minute. And it's a very large file that is just uncompressed data from your camera. The JPEG, your camera will typically also make, if you're shooting RAW, you shoot RAW Plus, for instance. Um, the JPEG takes the RAW data, compresses it into a JPEG format, applies any color filters that you might have your camera set to, and then saves the JPEG. There are a few different camera settings. There's RAW only, RAW Plus, or RAW Plus JPEG, as it's sometimes called, and then JPEG only. If you shoot JPEG only, you will lose the raw data every time you take your next picture and only get the JPEG. If you shoot raw only, you will never get a JPEG out of it. That's okay, you can always get that in post pretty easily. You can never recover the raw data in post. If you shoot raw plus JPEG, you will get the raw image plus the JPEG. Where these come in useful is if you are doing high-end editing raw is a good option. If you're doing bulk editing, for instance, really the strongest use of raw photos is that you can open 20 or 50 or 100, as I do, up in a raw photo editor like Photoshop has all at once. If you, they were all taken with similar lighting in the same setting, you can adjust all your settings on once on one image and then synchronize all the rest of your images to have those same settings like that. It takes what would have been three hours of photo editing and editing and turns it into 15 minutes. So RAW is really powerful for that. RAW also saves a lot more data so you can recover a lot of highlight detail and a lot of shadow detail. If you like HDR photos, you don't need to take three or five bracketed photos. You can take one RAW photo and then recover enough highlight and shadow detail most of the time to create an HDR image. JPEGs lose a lot of it. JPEGs have far less data. They're very what's called lossy, meaning that a lot of the data is lost and it's not recoverable. And so they're compact, which is why they're really good for the internet, but they don't have a whole lot of information on them. So if you're really serious about your photo editing and want to take a quick step up in improving your photography on uh, digitally, shooting in RAW and learning how to use RAW images is a really good and quick step to take to become a better photographer. You'll really enjoy the power that RAW editing gives you as, uh, as a photographer and as somebody who's really interested in expressing a creative vision through their images.